It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we've got a beer from Green King Brewery and it's a can of their Flint Eye. Now, this is a dry hop lager. It's coming in at 4.5% ABV. I think I know, without reading the box, I think I know why they called this Flint Eye. I've been to the Bury St Edmunds Brewery. I stopped off at the train station and was picked up by Russ, the head brewer of Green King. We walked through the town, but as we were walking through the town, we went through this park and it was like ancient ruins in the grounds. And um, I believe off the top of my head, because it was three years ago, it was Flint. I'm pretty sure they were a Flint ruin of some kind of cathedral or church or something. I think that's why they call it Flint. I will find out in a moment. Um, yeah, let's get this beer open out into a glass. See what we get. I picked this up in Sainsbury's. It cost me £5.50 for four cans. So that works out at £1.38 per can. And I think in this day and age, 2023, that's pretty reasonable. That is pretty reasonable for a can of craft beer. 4.5% ABV, 330 milliliter pink looking can, refreshingly filtered. Let's get it out into a glass and see what we get. Lovely, if you have the chance to go to Bury St Edmunds, go, it's, it's a wonderful place. Uh, of course, it's where Green King Brewery are based, so a lot of the pubs are Green King Brewery uh, beers, but I had some wonderful breakfasts. Uh, I went for a wonderful eat Indian meal, which I'll never forget that Indian meal because I was so hungry and it was just the best Indian meal in the world at that very point in time. I think we had a poppadom starter, me and the head brewer, and I must have ate, ate about 12 poppadoms to myself. <laughs> Ravaged after a day at the brewery, being walked round and shown all the kind of... It was a wonderful brewery, by the way. If you have a chance to do the Green King Brewery Tour, have a look. It's, it's quite brilliant. Um, one finger white head, good levels of carbonation on this lager. It, it's, they called it filtered, but hang on. Yeah, let's get the condensation off the glass. It is a filtered lager. They have polished this right up. I wouldn't have minded if it was unfiltered. I really wouldn't have minded. I think for a, a craft lager in 2023, if it was slightly hazy, I don't think anyone would really mind. Light straw coloured, let's get the aroma. Smells pretty good though. Smells pretty good. It's got a combination of like a German Haratau Saz, Czech Saz. But then some new world stuff going on behind the scenes. It's it's a bit lemon-like and a bit orange peel-like. But then again, it, it's, it's got that lovely dryness of a lager. It's, it's got that lovely... I mean, I've not looked at the box. I'm, not, I'm going to guess on pills and a malt here. Yeah, so my hunch, my guess is they've used pills and malt. It's quite dry in the aroma. Spicy and peppery. It smells good. It smells really good. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Do you know, that's all right. That's all right for a lager. That is, that is definitely kind of leaning towards being New World. And it's definitely leaning towards being quite traditional for a lager too. One half of my brain is thinking it's kind of Czech-like or German-like. And then there's another half of my brain that's going, yeah, there's some lemon, there's some orange peel coming through. It's a bit peppery and spicy. It's quite nice, actually. 
My only... Now, whilst I was at the brewery three years ago, I didn't see any lagering facilities at the brewery. Um, I've been to other lager breweries since. I've fallen in love with lager over the last two or three years. And I've made myself very aware of lager. And I've tried to kind of like visit lager brewery. So I've been to Budweiser Budvar last year. I went to more beer company where they got some horizontal fermenters. And this is the key, see. Um, what I noticed at the at the lager breweries that set up to produce lager is that everything's horizontal. They have horizontal fermenters to, to, to produce the lager. Lager seems to like being horizontally fermented. Um, ask the technical brewers why, or if you're a technical brewer, maybe you would like to leave a comment down below. Um, I do know, but I forget. I get told every time I go to visit a lager brewery why the fermenters are horizontal and then give it a few months and it's gone, psh, it's just piddled out my other ear. But I don't remember seeing any horizontal fermenters at Green King. What I'm wondering then is, have they pulled this lager in? Is this a contract brewed lager that they've hocked themselves? Or have they come across any other kind of method? Maybe, maybe they're lagering in vertical fermenters. Maybe that's their way of doing things. But whatever they've done, they've produced something quite decent here. It's crisp, it's dry drinkable. Now this is the third beer I've had from Green King in the last month. I had the old Master Hen which was a boxed version of Old Speckle Hen. I think it's about 7% ABV. That was wonderful. A really lovely beer. I just finished reviewing the Level Head Session IPA. Again, decent beer. And their lager, their craft lager here is They've not called it a craft lager, they've called it a dry hop lager. But it's very good, it's very crisp. Like I, I look forward to, sometimes when I'm forced to buy these boxed beers, I think, oh, when am I gonna drink the other three cans? I'm not really fussed on, let's look at this one for argument's sake. I know there's probably going to be a struggle for me to drink the other three cans when I review Brewdog's Neon Dream. Um, I'm not going to write Brewdog off, but um, I'm, not, I'm not a massive fan of their beers these days. And I think it's going to be, I'd rather buy the one can of that. Whereas I bought four cans of this flint eye and I quite happily tuck away the other three beers. It's that, it's, it's pretty, pretty decent. So a uh, description on the can then. As every scholar knows, the East Anglian soil is rich with relics of the past. This crisp dry hop lager is our tribute to the Stone Age master craftsmen whose razor sharp flint tip arrowheads are still turned up by farmers ploughs today. Right, okay. The cattle hops are Tetanenga, German. The whirlpool are Stewie and Goldings. That's British. The dry hop is Saz and Mandarina Bavaria, which are German hops. I, I mentioned an orange flavour in, in, in this lager. That's definitely coming from the Mandarina Bavaria. It's lovely. The malt. I want to know the malt. I want to know the malt. Lager malt. So maybe Pilsner malt then. It's good. Very, very good. For £1.38 a can. I think that's a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10 from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.